Welcome back, folks, to the Free March with a game called The Spirit Engine 2. It's supposed to be a pretty fantastic game, so hey! So cool music. I'm really not quite too sure about everything, but we'll bring down the music a little bit. Start game! Before starting the game, you'll need to choose the character whose journey you'll follow. There are three character slots, each with three candidates. Each candidate can fulfill one of three basic roles in combat, knight, musketeer, or priest. It is advisable to have at least one of each type in your group so that you are prepared for all eventualities. Click on a portrait to select a character. If you can't decide who you'd like to take, just stick with the three initially selected. Um... Kalto Stern. This is our musketeer. This is our priest. I assume he's our knight, yeah. Well, if we need one of each... I'm liking that guy as our priest. This chickie is our... Oh, actually, I kind of like her as the... Oh, and he looks like it. Yeah. Look at that. They look pretty sweet. Finally, you'll need to select the difficulty setting. This affects the strength of monsters in the game. Alright. Well, it is my first time, so... And again, folks, as with the rest of these games, it is 100% free sauce. Proudly presenting. Trust in wisdom. Live in peace. It's doing that for effect. Did it help? Chapter 1. Lights in the Forest. Leap Cut Highway. I knew I was headed in the right direction. It's only 15 furlongs to Glindanoth now. Hopefully I can find someone there willing to hire a sword whose owner asks few questions. Oh shit, sorry, ah, damn it, I missed that. There's something lying on the road up ahead. It's hard to see in this light, but it looks like a person. A drunken vagrant, perhaps? Or a bandit. Something playing around and get up. Oh, stop playing around. Oh my god. Reading skills have just fallen over. If you're thinking of trying anything ungentlemanly, I would advise against it. I've walked a long way tonight, and I'm not in the mood to suffer fools or threats. Please, help me. Damn it, what a mess. The wounds are deep and there's too much blood. I'm sorry, my friend. I'm no doctor and there's nothing I can do for you. What happened here? Who did this? They found us. Three of them. We ran, but... Oh, God. The children. I tried to hold them off, but they were too fast. Please, I beg you. You have to. Have to. What children? Try to speak slowly, you fool. Who attacked you? Uh, I'm too late. Perhaps if I were younger, more innocent men, this tragedy would move me. But I've seen it too many times before. The fellow was easy prey for whoever caught up with him. Damn this mess. In his last moments, he spoke of his children. But the woods are dark and eerily quiet, and both they and his attacker seem to be long gone. Sorry, old man, what more can I do? Those look like lamplights in the distance. A village, perhaps? Maybe they know this unlucky soul. I suppose the least I can do is let them know his fate. Or bury him, you know. And how many others were with him? Just two. Just the two children. They fled east along the road and the masked men pursued them. Such an awful spectacle. They've only been traveling with us a few weeks, but they seem such kind and gentle folk. He was their father? I don't think so. A guardian, perhaps, that didn't much speak about themselves. In fact, they didn't much speak at all. It all happened so fast, and there was nothing we could do to protect them. The men have broken open the weapons chest and gone out into the woods with a search party, but I fear they will only find only the worst. 
Sorry, folks, I'm just burned out tired, but <laughs> we are a peaceful, simple community. All equipped to defend ourselves. Ill. Oof. Alright, let's take a deep breath. Hello! I think I may have found your man. His body lies some 200 feet back down the road. Alone, though. I saw no sign of any others. Then there is still hope. We three should get out there immediately and join the search. Your optimism is charming, sweetheart. But sadly, I doubt there's much left out there to find but two more bodies. And they can wait until morning. I wish we could do more to help, but we're too late. I won't believe it. I don't know what kind of man you are, but I have no intention of standing here whilst those children are lost out in the woods. We can't delay any longer. There are three assassins, two children, and we have already wasted precious time. I will search the woods south of the road. You two take the north. I'm frightened, Mommy. Are Isabel and L.A. going to die? No, uh, of course not, sweetie. These brave heroes are going to go out into the forest and save them, aren't you? I... <sighs> yes, of course we are. Take no notice of my complaints, ma'am. The long day has left me tired and irritable. It started badly enough and it's getting worse by the minute. Thank you. Please be careful out there. There is another stranger out searching north of the road. An odd-looking man, dressed in red robes, who is staying at the tavern. Don't be alarmed if you encounter him. God damn son of a The Tearful Shrine. Hold up. Not so fast, you stupid woman. We're going to run headlong into trouble. Need a moment to get my breath back. God, you're rude. We could go faster if you weren't so insistent upon keeping that plate mail on. I'm glad you came, though. For a moment back there, I actually thought you were going to refuse to help. I was. I'm only coming along to reassure the town folk. I'm no hero, nor do I expect this expedition to be successful. Much as I might wish it to be so, experience tells me otherwise. The children should never have been out here alone at the mercy of the woods. They're as good as dead already, and this is a dangerous waste of time for us both. But you still came, and I thank you for that. I shall try to hold enough hope for the two of us. I'm Charlotte Kay. You are? Kaltos. Kaltos Stern. Pleased to meet you, Kaltos. I've not seen a knight for quite some time. You're a dying breed, you know. There's not much call for a man with a sword in this day and age. What's your story? You look like a mercenary to me. We saw enough pass through the bow buffer in my time. Are you currently employed? Married? You're not going to tell me, are you? I hope you aren't going to be the strong and silent type. They're very boring. I hope you're not going to be the loud and overbearing type. They're very irritating. What business is my private life to you, anyhow? I was just trying to make friendly conversation and keep our spirits up. Meanwhile, the children are being flayed alive by wolverines out there. But you're not making it easy. You could help me out a little here. I'd rather that you didn't harass me, lady. We have more important things to worry about. The local wildlife appears as unfriendly as I'd feared. Keep your eyes open. Hello, and welcome to the Spirit Engine 2. This brief tutorial message will help you learn the game's controls. If you would like to skip any tutorial, left-click on the Finish Tutorial or press the S key. Otherwise, left-click on Continue. This button, or the key... Oh, the, I'm sorry, the quote key opens the game menu. This isn't available right now, but it will be in a few minutes. These little icons represent the state of your characters, their state effects, their capabilities, and combat. To view the effects of the characters, place your mouse cursor over the icon when this tutorial is over. Sometimes if a character has something to say, their icon may flash. If you would like to hear it, left-click on the icon. You may move your intrepid party left or right. Oh, it's a click mover. Hmm. Or by holding the left and right keys. We can do that too. To make your characters run, move the cursor to the edge of the screen or hold down the control key. Head right now. Your characters have just engaged in combat. Your objective is to knock out all opposing creatures. Beware. If all your characters are knocked out instead, you will lose the fight. Characters and creatures are knocked out if their health reaches zero. Your characters and opposing creatures will slowly recover while they are knocked out and will return to combat after a short period of time. Your characters fight using the skill chain. The skill chain is a repeated sequence. Use a skill requires more energy represented by this bar. Energy recharges over time. These buttons allow you to select skill chains for an individual character. You may right click to bring up one of the list of many skill chains and then assign one to a button. The character will immediately switch and perform that skill chain. To use and restart the skill chain again, left click again on the button. Okay. Click and hold the mouse button on a character to bring up the menu and quickly select a single skill. 
Shortly, you'll be able to access the skill menu and create your own skill chains. For now, however, let your characters fight by themselves. Okay. I assume once I can create my own skill chains, it's a little bit more. Damn it. He's only got five seconds left. My party have fought three foes and have been victorious. Cool. Alright, let's get a run on. Hail there. I'm glad to see friendly faces. I need your assistance. You must be the man from the village whom the mayor mentioned. It's good to see you. I'm Charlotte Kay. This is Carl Tostern back, Charlotte. I don't like the look of this fellow at all. Doesn't his appearance strike you as a little odd? I don't know. This looks like the man the mayor told us about, and he needs our help. I didn't last this long by ignoring my instincts. I wouldn't want to turn my back on this fellow. There's something about him that I don't like. Well, keep an eye on him, then. There's one of him and two of us. Is there a problem? I can understand if my apparel is a little off-putting, but let me assure you. No, no problem at all. Please forgive our hesitance. The situation has us all on edge. What did you need help with? Has your search met with any success? Yes, I found one of the children. She stumbled into the grasp of a large creature dwelling in the old fountain here. It hasn't harmed her yet. Thank God. I've spoken with the girl at a distance and tried to reassure her, but I don't know how long we have before it decided to make a meal of her. She's understandably quite frightened. The beast has already mauled one of our mysterious assassins and left him for dead. I was about to run back to the village for help when I heard your approach through the undergrowth. We'll take all three of us to drive back the creature and free her. Follow me. What the frig is that? Um. Okay. You may do this by pressing the space key. Alternatively, you may click on a character to send him the fundamental attack. There are five types of damage. Piercing, concussive, magical, ethereal, and absolute. Your characters and opposing creatures may resist damage using skills, items, and natural resistances. Hold your mouse over a character or creature to view a pop-up window showing the damage modifiers. These buttons allow you to select party chains in the same way as individual skill chains. Okay. Let's take a little attack support. Okay, so it runs down this list. This will be defend. You need to go to the back. Let's bring her. Slay! but <laughs> 
Isabel. It is Isabel, isn't it? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm Isabel. Hello, miss. How do you do? I'm doing just fine, thank you. But we're more worried about you. Are you hurt? I think I'm okay. Just scared. Is the monster gone? I have no idea. The well is deep and dark, and I can't see far down it. We heard it, though. There's ichor dripping down the walls. Arvel said we were safe from the monster so long as he was with us. The men in the masks, they wouldn't stop stabbing him, and Alay and I ran away. Where's Ardo? I'm so sorry, Isabella. He must have fought bravely, but he was found dead. There wasn't anything that could be done. He told us to leave him, but we didn't want to. And now he's... he's... We should probably move along. I can't tell whether this thing is dead or not, but I don't think we should be here if it comes back. Isabel, where's your brother? Did he come this way too? I don't know. Alay and I were running together, and then I tripped, and... and... It's going to be alright, Isabel. You're in safe hands now. We're not going to let anything happen to you. Stay behind us, and we'll go in and find it. Um... Okay. More, uh... Okay. Let's go with... One might... Oh. <laughs> Restart. Yes. So that's our inventory. Nothing really changes there. Charlotte. And Shadow. Alright, I guess I'll figure this out, right? Oh. Indicating the adjusted percentage. When an attack strikes them, each subsequent attack deals the damage multiplier. Get it. You adjust these things and that. Party gains one level. Many of the gelatinous creatures which inhabit Blue Feather Forest have a high resistance to piercing damage. It would be not wise to use attacks which deal piercing, piercing damage against them. Well, screw you.
Oh, did that not come out? Hold it right there! Identify yourselves! Hey, there's no need to wave that thing at us. We've come to the village for help. Really? I don't recognize any of you. Can't be too careful out here. It's alright, sir. We have one of the missing children with us. Is that you, Isabel? My goodness, you're alright. What about Mr. Triskelic? A lie. The Guardian is dead, I'm afraid. We're still looking for Isabella's brother. She said he might have come through this way. Aye, he may well have. We've been following a trail here. Paulson picked it up about a furball. F about a furlong. Whatever. That I did. There's a lot of broken undergrowth and two sets of footprints. One large, one small. Headed east at a great pace, the poor kid. He's losing ground. We'd have gone further, but Belter here tripped over a night bug. Really? The bug? I didn't trip over it. It leapt out of the dark at me like a black lightning, all teeth and claws. I'm lucky it only sank its nasty little teeth into my leg. We had to stop and tend to him. Can't afford to leave anyone alone out here. Now with those murderers on the loose. We're starting to lose our bearings already. It's only the pale moon and those infernal circling fireflies to light our way through the woods. We've got no compass, no map, and we're losing and we're a long way from the village. He's right, you know. I can't tell north from south, and I have no intention of getting lost out here. The boy may be long gone by now. We should think of turning back whilst we still can. There's no need for us to give up yet. So long as the cloud cover is sufficiently light, I can read our bearings from the alignment of the Altair constellation and Garethus on the far horizon. The village is back in that direction. We can continue the search from here. You and your men, Isabel. Sh uh, you, your men, and Isabel should head back as soon as you're able. If you're going on, I want to stay with you and find a lie. Please? I fine. We'll turn back once we get Belter back on his feet. I just hope you four have better luck than we did. Great, we've got ourselves a regular little party here. Let's hurry, please, before the simple change of weather foils Enshradu's marvelous tracking skills. Oh 
I guess I wasn't leveling up the whole party. I'm still not entirely sure of these skill chains and everything, but... Hold still, boy! This has to be done! It will be quick and painless. Please, no, mister! Don't hurt me! I've done nothing! Hold it right there. You're cornered and there's no way out. Don't even think about doing anything stupid. Back away from the lad and keep your hands where we can see them. No. Stay back, you fools! You must not interfere with... The girl? She lives! Yes, terribly sorry about that. One of your friends wasn't quite so lucky. This really isn't turning out to be a good night for any of us. Very well. For all our sakes, I shall make you this offer once. Walk away from this business, strangers. It is none of your concern. Leave the girl here and depart. Assist us, and the keepers can see to it that you are compensated with riches beyond your wildest dreams. Deny us, and my brother shall hunt you to the ends of Medea for your meddling. You're in no position to bargain, you bastard. I strongly doubt that you could name a price high enough for that child's life. The sentiment that for, stands for all three of us. Stay where you are. This is a citizen's arrest. We'll see what the local inspectorate makes of your behavior. No, there is much too much at stake. You leave me no choice. Nothing must remain. A lie! They're gone. There's almost no trace of them left. I've not seen alchemy of this kind before. Left nothing here but a cloud of ash and sulfur. We couldn't reach him in time. What? Why would he do such a thing? Oh, Halai! No! I'm so sorry, Isabel. I know it hurts, but there was nothing any of us could do. That's just life. Sometimes you're dealt a bad hand and you have to just play it as well as you can. Cheer up now. Ah! I was never much good with children, especially other people's. Uh, could one of you two help me out here? I, I don't know what to do about her. Oh, for heaven's sake, have you no heart? She needs to be held. Fine, you handle her. I'd best keep an eye out for a third assassin. At least one of us hasn't forgotten that he's still on the loose. He could be anywhere out there. Yes, he could. If he's not intending to ambush us on our return, he could be retreating to find more of his kind as we speak. I can't see any more that we can do here. We should return to the village. It isn't wise to stay out in the forest any longer than we have to. Finally, I've had just about enough of this madness tonight. Let's hope this ends it. Huh. Here you are. We were beginning to worry about what may have... Uh, that you might need rescuing yourselves. You have the girl alive? Where's the other child? I... We... Well... The boy is dead. We couldn't get to him in time. For what it's worth, two of the assassins have perished too. Oh no. Poor Eli. How could anyone do such a horrible thing? Merciful heavens, this is an awful business indeed. We're close to a border here. Do you think these murderers were Jergen? Those fiends might just do such a thing. I don't believe so, though I've never heard of these keepers before. They left no indication as to who they were or what they wanted here. I'm so sorry. I wish we could have done more. No, you mustn't be too hard on yourselves. Without your help, both children would have surely perished. It is a miracle you were here to save her. I guess it kind of is, isn't it? There was nothing at all that we simple townsfolk could have done. There's nothing more that we can do if these monsters return to try again. You're absolutely right, Mayor. The girl cannot stay here. These assassins will be back the next time you won't be so lucky. If you'd like, I can take custody of her. I'm traveling east towards Kelestrain. She'll be safe with me, I can assure you. It would be unwise for anyone to try and look after the child alone. We don't know who wants her dead or why. We should let the authorities take charge of her well-being. Being this close to the border, the army should be our first option. Long Reach is not far from here. We could leave her in their custody for the time being. On the edge of the Great Plains? think she'll be safer next to a potential war zone? Surrounded by 12,000 soldiers in the strongest fortress in all of Lerithane? I cannot think of anywhere safer. And Shadu's idea sounds sensible. With someone who would watch over her night and day, we would uh, we'd be free to make some inquiries about her situation without putting her at risk. 
This is quite unnecessary. An army fort is no place for a young girl. I'm quite happy to look after her myself. I'm sure she'd prefer that. Well, maybe we should let Isabella decide herself. What do you think, Isabel? I... I don't really know. But if I have to go anywhere, I want to go with you three. Very well. Please excuse my outburst. There's only concern for the child's safety. He seems to know what she wants, though. Be sure to take good care of her and tell no one where you're taking her. Goodbye, Isabella. I hope you've chosen the line. Huh. wonder what's up with her. I don't know. Perhaps she was just angry that she couldn't have done more to help. I know how she feels. I hope we haven't offended her. You should go and pack, Isabel. You have a long walk ahead of you. Do you have much to carry? Not really. We didn't take much when we left home, and now that Ardai, Ardol and Ali are gone. Come with me. I'll help you sort your belongings out. Holy God, that's a lot of talking. You expecting me to come with you? No, Kaltos. You've done enough already. If you'd prefer to stay, we ought to be able to manage the journey without any further assistance. It's a full 30 furlongs. If our friend and fancy dress return, I can't imagine the two of you fighting off any determined opposition alone. If you're serious about getting her there alive, you'll need my help. I will accompany you as far as Longreach, then go my own ways. I can look for work further north in Pole Stars. Oh, my throat, too. <laughs> this is wonderful. The three of us will make a great team. When do we leave? Immediately. I do. Please, let's just go. I want to leave. And we should. To long reach and safety. So long, and take care, strangers. May fortune smile upon you all. Anyway, folks, I think this is a good place to stop off. I am dead tired right now anyway, and so, uh, seeing the little introduction to this game, it's neat. I'm, I'm curious as to how the combat system works a little bit more, so I think this is just going to be another game that I put on my back burner and uh, look forward to picking up at some random time when I'm bored. So, folks, as always, thank you very much for watching, and tune into the rest of The Free March. Thanks for watching, folks.